In this video, I will show you how to create a relationship between a vector layer and a table, and then how to use it in QFill app. Here in QGIS, I have a vector layer, which is the study locations point layer, and also I have a table that I called evaluations. Both of this point layer and table are currently empty, but I'm going to show you the fields of them before I create a relationship. So in the point layer, I have just five fields plus the fit, uh, just simple fields. But as you notice, I have added this field that is called unique ID. This is a text field with a length of 100. And this is important to notice because in the table, I also need to have a common field. In this case, I also have a field that is called unique ID. We'll pass information from that field into this one after we do the configurations. And then here, yeah, I also have five fields, just simple fields for this example. Okay, I'm going to create a relationship between this point layer and the table. I go to the project tab and then properties. And then I select relations and I'm going to add a new relation. I'm just going to add a name. I'm going to call it study locations evaluations. I'm going to change the relationship strength to composition. And here in the reference or parent layer, I want the point layer to be the parent layer. So I select the field that I want to use as a common field. In this case, is a field unique ID. And the reference layer or child, in this case, is going to be that table. And the same, I select the field unique ID. Then I click OK and apply. And then OK, and I can close this window. So now I have a relationship between those two, but we still have to do some configurations in the layer and the table before we can actually upload this into QField Cloud to then be able to use it in QField app. I'm going to open now the properties of the layer, the vector layer in this case. And I'm going to go to Attributes Form. And here I'm going to change the attribute form from Auto Generate to Drag and Drop Designer. Here I can see the fields that are going to be on my layout. I'm going to remove, uh, in this case, Fit. I don't want to see that in Q field. And I'm going to leave the rest with exception. Actually, I'm going to also going to hide the unique ID from the actual form. However, I'm going to select it here in the available widgets because I need to do some configurations here. So for unique ID, I'm going to change the widget type to hidden. But then we need to create a unique ID. So every time we add a point, a new unique ID needs to be added into that field. For that, again, hidden and I go to the default area, and in this default value, I'm going to click on the expression tab there. And here I'm going to search for the record and attributes UUID, uh, and I'm going to select the one without braces. And then it is added to my expression window, and we can see here a preview of how uh, it creates a unique ID. Now I'm going to click OK and then apply. And before I close or before I'm done with the vector layer configurations, we need to add that relationship into this form layout. We see here the relation that we just created. So I'm going to add it. I just drag it and drop it into this form layout. And here we can also uh, add a label for this. Uh, relationship and I'm just gonna call it the same study study location and then I'm just gonna put evaluations and we want the Carnari many to one and that is correct and this is all we need to do here I'm gonna click apply and okay and I'm gonna save my project okay now uh, I need to do uh, the configurations in the evaluation table so I'm gonna open the properties and I'm going to go to the attribute form 
And again, I'm gonna change the attribute form from auto generate to drag and drop designer. I'll remove the fields that I don't wanna see. In this case, I'm gonna leave the unique ID here since this is an example to see how we're gonna pass the unique ID. For the unique ID, we need to make sure the widget type is relations reference. Uh, and the relation needs to be shown here. It is picking up, of course, the right relationship. We only have one in this project. We can change the, the display expression if we want to. We can, for example, uh, use the unique ID as the expression. And we're gonna click apply. And basically that's all here. However, I'm gonna also show you how to add a simple domain list using this field status, because we're in this example, we're gonna be adding points, point locations that we can maybe think that they are like, let's say towers that you need to visit in a weekly base. And then we can have a status of, are they in good condition or they're in a bad condition? So we can do the status good or bad. In order to do that, we select the field and we go to the widget type and we're gonna change that to value map. Here in value map, this is allowing us to add a list. If you have a long list of domains, you can use the low data from CSV file. Uh, but if you wanna just add uh, a few of them, like in this case, I'm just gonna do good condition or his good description, good and bad, bad condition you can just add it manually. Okay, so I'm gonna click apply one more time and then okay. Now I'm gonna save my project one more time. Okay, so now we're ready to upload this into QFill Cloud to then uh, open it in QFill app. If you haven't downloaded QFill Sync, uh, I would definitely recommend you watching this, my first video about QFill with QFill Cloud. If you don't have it yet, so we need to download QFill Sync. So you go to, to the plugins tab section and then you open the manage and install plugins and you're gonna search and the not install for QFill Sync. And then you just install it and when uh, it's already installed, you can close this window. You're also gonna need a QFill Cloud account. I would recommend you to watch my first video about QFill with QFill Cloud. Now the uh, we're ready, we're gonna use the QFill Sync tools and we're going to first start with the configure current project so I click there and then here I'm going to make sure I'm using the base map that I have in my project which is the S3 satellite and then I'm going to select cable export and I just double check that my layers are, are here if we want to we can change the action to offline editing if for any reason you're going to be using offline editing in this case for the tutorial I won't but I'm just going to change it uh, just in case and then I'm gonna click apply and okay. And now I'm gonna save my project one more time. And now I'm gonna click on the QFill Cloud to add a new project in, to my QFill Cloud account. Uh, you need to enter your username and your password and then you click on sign in. Now that you're already in this window, if you have any project, you will see them here. And in order to add a new one, you go here to the lower left part of this window and then click on the cloud to create a new project. I will just leave the default as a recommended and then I click next. If you want to, you can change the name of your project here. I will leave it as it is. And as I mentioned before in my video about QFill app with QFill Cloud, I want you to make sure you know or you write down this location. This is where your project is being uh, packaged for QFill Cloud and it saves a copy here. You can change it if you want to, or you can leave it as it is. Uh, I usually just leave it as in this location and I know exactly where to find my QFill cloud projects. Now when we're ready, we click on create. And now uh, I'm gonna click okay and close so my project's already in the cloud. Now I'm gonna open my mobile device and we'll test to uh, adding a point and adding a related record to that point. And see you there. Okay, now here in QFill app, uh, just for your information, I'm using an Android system mobile device. Uh, you open QFill Cloud, you open QFill app, and then uh, log in with your credentials if needed. And then you're going to click on QFill Cloud Projects. Then if you need to, you refresh the project list. 
And then in this case, I have here the project QFill tutorial related tables that I just uploaded into QFill Cloud. Now I see it here in my QFill application. If I select it, then I can download it into my mobile device. And now that it's already available locally, which is mean which means available in my mobile device, I can select it one more time to open it. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a point. So I open the layer list. I can see the study locations and evaluations. Currently there's no data. I select the study locations and now I'm gonna activate editing by uh, clicking or selecting the pencil on the bottom of my screen. Now I'm gonna go back to the map and I'm just gonna drop a point to click on the plus sign. Uh, we can, I'm gonna just add a test one as the local location name. I won't add anything for Latin Dawn and I can also add a related table. You see a study location evaluation. So if I do uh, click on the plus sign, I can add a related record. And we also see the uh, drop down list that I created. And then I can put the status in this case and say good. And I uh, mentioned I didn't hide the unique ID in the table, so we can see it here, but that's something that can be hidden if you want to. And then I'm gonna click on the check mark, and then I'm gonna do the same for the point layer, and then now we have a point with a related table. Uh, let's say we wanna add a second related record to this point, to this existing point. Let's say we're, we're back a week later, so we can select the point, and then select the, um, in this case, that record, which was the only one selected. And then if we see that A, capital A with a pencil on there, uh, I'm gonna select that to be able to edit this record. And if I go to the bottom of my screen, we can uh, add a second related record. I'm gonna put the, Day, let's say as 18 and that test. And then I click on the check mark and one more time. And now my changes have been saved. Now uh, I'm going to go back to the layer list area. I'm going to disable editing. And we see that the cloud. Uh, the blue cloud on the top has three uh, changes that can be pushed to QFill Cloud and then later open it in QGIS. So I'm going to select that cloud and I'm going to select push changes. And now this it says that the changes have been successfully uh, uploaded to uh, my QFill Cloud account. And now I'm going to go back to QGIS to show you how to synchronize the data there and see uh, the record that we just added. We'll see a QGIS. Okay, now back here in QGIS, double check that you have the right project open, the one that says the name of your project with QFU Cloud in parentheses. And now we go into the synchron synchronized current cloud project and we make sure that the cloud it is checked and now I'm going to click on perform actions and then I can click OK. And now we can see the point that we just created. If I select it, I can see the related records and the point. That's all I have in this video. I hope this was helpful. If it's like that, please give me a thumbs up or a like. And also, if you would like to keep watching more videos about data and GIS, I would invite you to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.